I wrote under the table for seven years, nearly all of it while I was a housemaster at Westminster School in London. There's no doubt it was a stress buster and it neatly solved what might otherwise have been a bit of a conundrum, what to do with myself during all those long holidays. A startling amount of writing, including endless redrafts, came out of cheap hotel rooms in various parts of the world. And that context says something about the book as well. I created a fictional alter ego, more alter than ego, though it would be daft to deny certain parallels. For one thing, Dominic, the central character, is an extremely chatty gay history teacher who's run away from his boarding school in his mid-teens after a somewhat lurid narrative. When at Oxford, he gets briefly a bit caught up in trying to lift himself uh, a notch or two on the social ladder. But his main energies are romantic and sexual, highly ambidextrous too. A few years later, he is teaching at one of England's great public schools, entertained and enthralled by it all, and feeling periodically shafted by his bosses. But Dominic isn't me, and Under the Table isn't an autobiography. For one thing, unlike him, I've never contracted a marriage, and when, only in his early 30s, Dominic's implodes, he's propelled into a series of disasters, not the least of which is being arrested for importuning. So I guess this is my big chance to make it crystal clear that's pure fiction. Moreover, the texture of his life thereafter, one lived in great simplicity, stands in some contrast to my own more pampered progress. And as well as making him more ascetic, I couldn't resist drawing Dominic as being a whole lot steelier. There's a moment when he's about 30 and you see him properly stand up to one of his colleagues, a real gothic horror. Any reader detecting some wish fulfillment in that moment is bang on the mummy. Burrowing down a bit more, this book arose out of my deepest preoccupations. To that extent, I needed to use contexts with which I was familiar. I wrote out of love and admiration for my parents and for my brothers and sister. But the book is no peon for a time of lost innocence. Far more, it's been a way of trying to reconcile all my loyalty and love with my bafflement. Bafflement that notwithstanding all the love they gave me, I was so grievously lost while I was still young. I wrote also because I love remembering the 1960s and 70s. Crap food, dire domestic architecture, and down my neck of the woods, the full blast of Catholicism. I wrote also because I wanted to remember again what we all go through in reaching out to adulthood. Being broke, getting irritated and embarrassed by your parents, loving awkwardly and one-sidedly, being envious socially as well as sexually, bathing deep in friendships laughing, drinking yourself sick, realising even when you are approximately grown up, you can still hate like a child. And that when you do, somewhere along the line, it's you who's lost the plot. And then there was something more. Under the table sees Dominic diminished, humbled by events, reduced, to obscurity. But he's never surrendered his joy in life, never lost his faith in others. And given that he lacks the adornments of traditional success, he's got no wife or children, no money, no glittering prizes, 
the reader has to ponder, how can that be? And I think the answer is found in the cast of characters who've made up his own rather singular journey. His resilience is really a triumph of love, love given and love received. And that, above all, was the story I felt I needed to tell.